Hello everyone, this is Wild. In this video series, I'm going to talk about how Street Fighter V works on the inside. From what I've read on Reddit and what I've seen on Twitter, I found out that only few people know Deep Tech. In my case, I've spent the last 2 or 3 years inside the memory of SF5 and inside the game engine files. And how did that went? <sighs> So anyway, I know this game pretty well and I think I can teach you one or two things. It doesn't matter if you are a scrub or a pro, I'm pretty sure that you will learn at least one thing. So let's put things up by talking about the standing leg punch. Really? You talk about hardcore tech all the time and now you just throw a jab. The standing leg punch or stand LP or jab or petit point in French is the most simple move that you can have inside Street Fighter V. Yet to really grasp everything that's going on here, we need to go deep into the frame. Uh, Alright! <laughs> Don't worry, I'll explain later. In order to understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to show this animation. Most of us in the fighting game community have seen this one. While it's mostly accurate, and don't get me wrong, it's a great tool to understand the different phase of uh, active, startup, it's done, recovery, but this is not complete. Some questions still remain unanswered. Why the length of my animation is different on it or on whip? Why my advantage is different on it, on counterweight or on guard? What is a counterweight actually? And what is this weird frame that is both active and startup? So let's back it up and lay out a good base ground of what is a move. Everyone knows this one, but let's look at this from the game's perspective. Well, that's better. The 3D models and visual animations doesn't matter from the gameplay engines. This is SFV Sim, a Street Fighter V simulation software that I've created where you can play with the SF5 engine and try to understand it. From a game's point of view, what's important are those boxes. The main rule is the following. If a hitbox in red intersects a hurtbox in green, the opponent is hit. There can be plenty of subtlety, but we're not here for that. Yet. What about the orange one? This is called a collision box and can be referred as push box or sometimes badly physical box. The main rule being two collision box can't collide on the same frame. So if I work forward, the player is pushed back. Thus, its name. If you were at least curious by fighting game at some point, you know those concepts already, so let's move on. The startup is by definition the phase before the first hitbox appears. And how many frames are there? One, two, three. Perfect, there are three frames before any hitbox appears. What does the frame data says? Four, four, I know. Four. Wait, what? Doesn't mean anything. Don't worry, it's perfectly logical. What you have to understand is that a frame is not an atomic unit and you have to see inside it. In practice, the definition of the startup extends until the apparition of the hitbox, as I said. But this is in the middle of the frame. Na 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 na. It's a play on words, you, you're just trying to confuse everyone, it's just three frames, right? Well, tell you what, during first strike, it was actually noted like this. Three frame startup will totally mean three frames before the first active frame. But nowadays, it's actually less confusing to count that way. Because you actually count the transition phases. Let me show you why. Here's the timeline of the light punch starting from two standing players. Yeah, you see? Three frames of stand for player two. I'm right. This is true, however, let's decompose the frame in two. If you count the beginning of the frame for player two, there are 
four standing frames. And it's because it corresponds to the action of the player two. And because begin corresponds to the period of action for player two, that's where it's important. You can act during the beginning of the frame, therefore on frame four, you can still block. That's why the startup is four frames. As a reference, here's how a frame is computed inside Street Fighter V. As you can see, the hitbox computation and in test are done after the transition and input check. So yeah, there are way more than one thing happening during one frame, and the order of each steps have huge impacts. Okay, 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 you got me. Uh, let's continue, please. Perfect, now let's consider we're at the end of the fourth frame and you have hit your opponent. Woo! Next, something that is usually not known to non-tech players happens. There is a time freeze phase, usually called the uh, hit stop or hit freeze and sometimes badly called stun. In order to feel the impact, the execution of the move is uh, frozen for a few frames for both players. Here's the jab played normally. Here's a fierce played normally. Here's the jab without hit freeze. Here's the fierce without hit freeze. See how it's floppy? The consequences of this hit freeze phase uh, are essential for hit confirms, otherwise you would never have time to react. And after this step, we can go into the recovery. However, in order to explain how that works and how frame advantage is computed, I need to show you how the game executes a move. Here's the full description of Kami's jab. There are lots of stuff on the screen, I know, but don't worry, we'll get through. Firstly, let's describe what we see. On the top panel, you have a box rendering of the frame. On the bottom right, you have the description of the timeline and all the elements that describes the move. You can select a frame number by clicking on the timeline or by using your keyboard. Here's how the game engine works. During one frame, you will select all the active elements in the timeline and you will use them. For instance, this hotbox is active during frame 4 and frame 5, meaning that at frame 3 or frame 6 it is inactive, it won't be used. Now you might wonder, what is this grey box? This corresponds to a specific type of hitbox called the proximity box, as written here. I won't go into detail right now, but basically if the proximity box uh, hits the opponent, he or she can't walk back anymore. It will activate what is intelligently called the proximity guard. Now back to our initial situation, let's select the fourth frame. When you hit, you will apply what is called an hit effect. So let's see what it does. You have to first select what is the situation of the hit. Is it in the air? Is it crouched? Is it counter hit? Is it on guard? Etc. The reaction of the opponent will obviously differ and that's where it is selected. In this display, each situation corresponds to a specific colon. Let's pick on hit for stand position, the standard. Let's see what the display tells me. It's a hit and not a guard? It's a standard light hit, that's what the L stands for, it will select the corresponding animation. It does 30 damage, other gauge related stuff, yada yada yada. And now it says hit freeze, main recovery and now back. And all the stuff that I won't go into because it's not relevant here. Alright, now we know the amount of the frozen frames for the attacker and the defender. Be careful, sometimes those values differ. Finally, now we can compute the recovery phase. Here's how it works. The main part is where the knockback is applied. The knockback is how much the defender is pushed back 
due to the impact. This phase duration corresponds to the amount of main recovery. Well, did you know that in Street Fighter V the actual knockback is not what's written in the game file? For instance, this is a graph of the defender's position for a knockback value of 0.35 and a duration of 7 frames. Notice that the final value is actually 0.40. And even worse, if we plot the counterweights and the guard values, we get less pushback. This is due to the way SF5 computes its quadratic curve and it depends on the number of frames you spread the knockback on. The actual knockback formula is All right, all right, it's not finished yet. After the knockback, there are a few frames of additional recovery. This video is already too long and too complex, so I won't detail on why this phase behaves like this. Please note that I do know why, and it's not easy. Just know that the general rule for this phase is one frame during a guard, 4 frames during a hit or counter hit, and 13 frames during a crush counter. As I said, it's just a generic rule, and there are exceptions, and yes, I see you Alex, I see what you're doing, come on. You know what? We're not done. There is one last phase that I voluntarily eluded. We know that Kami's jab is 11 frames, right? However, in the game engine files, it actually says 47 frames of total length. What gives? Starting from frame 12, you can actually interrupt the execution of the move to do something else. But if you don't do anything, you will still be in the execution of the jab. Those frames are more and more popular since the release of characters like Menat, Cody and uh, Zeku for instance. Those characters have additional animation on those frames. Those frames are called interruptible frames and you can also see the term Ayasa uh, to say that the script can be interrupted as soon as frame 12. Not that there are a hidden tech inside those frames. Here they are displayed in the dark grey area. As you can see on frames 12 and 13 the HUD boxes are slightly forward than the neutral position. Whew. Let's summarize the timeline of the jab showing off all the phases. There's the startup, the active phase with its weird first frame, as we've seen, the hit freeze, and then the recovery and interruptible frames for the attacker. From the defender's perspective, you have the hit freeze, the knockback phase, the final recovery, and also interruptible frames. Now you should be able to compute the frame advantage of each simple move uh, just based on pure data. That's a good exercise actually. Try your favorite normal and see if you can find the same results as the frame data. I think I'll stop here and you know what? I barely even scratched the surface of everything that we know about the Street Fighter V engine. This was a pilot episode. I don't know if there will be more, but anyway. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or ping me on Twitter at wide, uh, W-Y-D-D. -D. And check out the description for more details and I will see you next time. Yeah.